Hey guys, Steve here, and I'm just going to give you a quick tutorial on the easiest way to swap over to my 9mm Z-axis belt kit. So we'll get started here. I think the easiest way to do it is with the spindle mount at the top. We'll work the same with the inventables mount or any other mount. You want to have some of the lead screw, the acne screw, exposed at the bottom. And you want to have the machine powered off, you want to have the gantry far forward enough where you're going to be able to work on things. Tools that you're going to need, a uh, 4mm Allen key, 8mm, uh, any type of 8mm wrench, either hex or, uh, or box, so that'll work. And then you'll need a 10mm wrench as well. You'll need a 1.5mm Allen key of your choice. You'll need a 2mm Allen key for the new pulley. And then what makes this really easy is I use vice grips. And then I use wood blocks. Okay, let's get started. Now this tip is going to be helpful for anyone who's having issues getting this top nut tight enough. Now this top nut has to be tightened all the way before you tighten the set screws on any pulley because the function of the nut is to put force on the pulley down against the washer, against the inside of the bearing and pull the lead screw up against the bearing. There should be no play in that. And I see a lot of people having issues with these set screws falling out, the pulley slipping, but a lot of it could be alleviated just by having this nut properly tightened. So what I like to do, two wood blocks, a pair of uh, channel locks, vice grips, and with two hands you go in, and it's a little tricky to get positioned sometimes, but you go in and hold the wood blocks in with one hand, and you come back in with your pliers, square up the tips centered with the lead screw, make sure you're on the wood, and clamp it down tight. You're not going to hurt the, the uh, shaft of the screw if you're using wood blocks like that, as long as you don't overdo it. Okay, now that we've got the lead screw clamped between the wood, um, I changed camera angles so you're not seeing my arm while I'm doing the work here. Next step is we have to loosen the tension on the belt. And uh, there's the four nuts and bolts that are in the slots on this plate for the motor. So I've already loosened three of them ahead of time to save time filming here. I'm just going to loosen up the fourth one. And we need our uh, four millimeter Allen and eight millimeter wrench. So go ahead and loosen that up. Once that's loose, we can move the motor forward. And then now that we have this clamped securely, we can take our 10 millimeter wrench and go ahead and move the nut completely. Now, you want to hold on to the carriage for the spindle. Loosen the 1.5 millimeter Allen set screws that hold this pulley on. And then you'll want to intentionally just drop it. Don't let it slam. It doesn't have to go down all the way, but you want it down enough where you can take this assembly off. The washer that's supplied with the uh, machine does not get reused. We give you a precision shim instead of a stamped washer that goes on. Now you take your new pulley and your belt. Go ahead and line those up. First slip it into the pulley on the back side. Now this is the newer 2017 plus model where it's got the crimped pressed pulley on the stepper motor. If you have the older kit with the set screw pulley, you will order the kit with two pulleys. And you will get the right size pulley to replace the original one. Fortunately for the newer machines, this pulley does accommodate the 9mm belt. The older machines does not. Just a quick example of that show you that before we install this. This is the pulley that came off. It just does not fit with the 9mm belt. So we'll go ahead and get this positioned. We'll go ahead and lift this up, get this into place. 
the 10 millimeter lock nut goes back on. You can hold your vice grips, tighten this down. Just still snug, doesn't have to be super tight. And at this point, you can take these off if you wanted to. You just want to make sure that everything still turns freely. Good tip when you're setting these machines up. If this whole assembly does not turn freely, especially on new machines, it may need just grease and break in where you, before you put the pulley on, you actually just drive it up and down with a cordless drill to the top and bottom completely. But I found that if you've messed around with it, had it apart, the best way you're going to get this uh, shaft to spin smooth and free without binding, go ahead and crack these two screws that hold the whole plate to the extrusion, the maker slide free. Go ahead and move this all the way to the top. We're freewheeling right now. Get it as close to the top as possible. Then, let me just gently make sure this is line centered best as possible. Then retorque these. Because there's a little bit of slop in the holes here. And if you can line this plate up better uh, while you've got everything apart, it just makes things run a whole lot smoother. But, got our two millimeter Allen. Already tighten these up. Make sure they're nice and tight. You can use Loctite on them if you want to. I haven't had a problem because these are M4. With the M4, I find that uh, less problematic than the M3 that comes in the original pulley. So now what I like to do is a flathead screwdriver. Just gently, you don't want to force it, but just enough to hold tension on there. And sometimes you can get lucky and wedge it. You want to tighten one fastener down. And you can pull this out. It should still have good belt tension. And you can go back. Tighten the rest of them down. I'm not going to finish tightening these uh, just to save time on filming. But that's it, you know, make sure if any wood splinters from the wood blocks got into your lead screws, go ahead and clean that up. Other than that, you know, put your spindle back in and you're good to go. If you have any questions, uh, get a hold of me.